Chris Babcock with us on the Uma, Uma guest line. You were painting the picture in the broadcast booth. Let's tell people who they are. So it's obviously everybody knows it's Greg Papa and Tim Ryan. It's it's Chris doing stats. It's Mike Holler, the program director for KMBR. He's the game day person in the booth there for you guys and has been for a number of years. Mike Baird yep. is the is the engineer and is a guy as good an engineer as you're going to get. And then, of oh, course, okay. the great yeah. the great Bob Sargent. Uh, who, you know, Sargi and I go back to the mid nineties. Uh, he's been, uh, you know, a radio person of, of, of football person. Um, you know, he's been with the Niners for years and years. One of the best people I know. So that's quite a room and you're right. Um, now, how do you know, what's your, and then process? don't forget I mean, Johnny Lund, Johnny Lund coming in there at, at, at halftime that's right. and, and some of the pregame guys stopping by and I don't want to interrupt you later. I'm, I'm very, a lot of mad respect for you for being back on the air and then when you just started your own channel and doing all those things and the effort and the passion and love that you have for sports. I talk to a lot of people that I was going on, oh, man, I love Larry. I did, so I'm not trying to kiss you, Heine, because I see you every Sunday, brother, but much love to you. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And it's a, it, you know, this has always been a labor of love, but KMBR has always been a very special place for me. Um just because I grew up in the avenues, you know, and I, you know, yep. I can remember as, as old as when I was three, four, five years old, you know, you know, putting my uh, head on my dad's knee, you know, listening to Lon Simmons, uh, you know, listening to KMBR and, you know, it's just so to me. And then of course my dad had an old transistor radio. He's no longer with us, but he had an old transistor right. radio that, that the dial broke out off Chris. He, it was locked on KMBR and he, ha- he kept that radio for like nine years after the dial broke. I said, Dad, the dial doesn't even work on this. He's like, yeah, but it's locked on KMBR, and that's the only station I listen to. And I'm like, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, work, working, working those games for the 49ers. I mean, Sarge is a, a huge 49er fan. Plus, this is his career. This is his, you know, sure. this is what he does. And, you know, my late father passed away three years ago. Absolutely loved the 49ers as a kid. He spent time in the city um, going to Keysar. So yeah. although I'm a huge Steelers fan and will continue to be, I probably know as much history about the 49ers as, you know, the, the, you know more than the average bear. And so to work those games um, every Sunday or whenever it may be, uh, to have, you know, thoughts of my dad, it's pretty cool. Yeah, no, seriously. When you're tied to it on a level that's deeper than just it's a job, you know what I mean? Um, then yeah. it, it, I think it does come come through. Um, I think we're all very passionate about what we do, and it's 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 a, personally. I, first of all, thanks for the kind words, and it's a thrill to be back here at KMBR talking about the Niners on the flagship station and working with John and working with Tommy and Copes and Greg and Tim, and it just you know it's Murph, a good group of guys. It's yeah, really I mean, good it's group Mike of and ladies just, that help support. I mean, there's it, it it and there's a lot of people that help that you that are way behind the scenes, but uh, yeah. Totally. I mean, I get notes from like uh, Dave Jenks and football. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's talk. Instead of talking behind the scenes, KMBR, we'll talk. uh, We'll talk football. Brock Purdy. Let's talk about Brock Purdy. One of the stats that I saw that I thought was pretty amazing, and this is just in the last day, that Purdy has the second highest PFF grade on seven step drops, trailing only Lamar Jackson. Does that surprise you, Chris? No, but tomorrow, if there's one thing that they need to be able to do on their offense is protect him. I mean, they had too many free runners off off blitzes in the last time they played in the Super Bowl in key positions. And, and if it's more than third and three, third and four, Spags is going to work his magic. And the other thing that they're going to – that he, he will do in this game, he's not going to allow Brock to do the Frank Darkin – you know, skipping and running right. in the back and then running for first downs. He will put kind of put a shell around. So when all things get real, the 49ers definitely need to protect tomorrow and they need to win on first and second down. So third down is third and three, third and four. Some things where it can be a run pass option. It's third and five, third and six. Jones and company are going to put, put a lot of pressure on Purdy. Yeah, no, I think you're you're right. And the Niners have to get themselves into third and manageable. You even heard the the soundbite from Spags earlier in the week. He's like, "Hey, look, we got to make the quarterback uncomfortable. We got to get to third, 
third down, and, and then we got some options there if we can get to third and long, but it's easier said than done. Last year in the Super Bowl, the, the Chiefs ran man-to-man coverage at the Niners 61% of the time, and really from when they went heavy man, it was probably more like 75-80% man in the second half of that game, and they really did a great job. Debo only had one reception on six targets uh, going against Trent McDuffie in Super Bowl 58. Um, and that, you know, this is what Spags likes to do. I mean, he's, he likes to play the man coverage. The, the stat though, that I wanted to throw your throw at you that I thought was interesting. My son dug this up for me this week. He's like the Niners defense starts fast and struggles in the second half. The de- the chiefs defense is literally the diametric opposite. And I was looking at some of the rankings. Sure enough, Niners go from ranked fourth to in the first quarter, uh, defensively to ninth to 31st in the third quarter to 21st in the fourth quarter chiefs are 21st defensively in the first quarter 13th in the second quarter but in the second half third quarter they're second and uh fourth quarter they're 11th but to me that's going to be that really interesting quarter in that third quarter where the 49ers uh, allow 7.3 points per game against them the chiefs allow 1.2 so um, that third quarter defensively is going to be uh, maybe pivotal. What do you see with the 49er defense? Because they those numbers kind of do reflect what we're seeing. The, the Niners defense has started pretty fast. They look good, and then they either wear down. Is it, You think it's fatigue? Um, is it the youth on the back end, the lack of depth of, with the pass rush? What, what do you think the reason is for the 49ers' regression in the second half defensively? Well, as you know, you know, there's a lot of combinations, but the Niners are deep. And I, just to be real short on it, <laughs> is they're, they're playing deep into their depth chart. There's guys that are playing in positions that run themselves out of positions, like the second play when the Cardinals ran that quarterback keeper with Murray. And the linebacker, you might have mentioned his name earlier in the broadcast in your show here, completely out of position. And so – what happens is, is these teams come and adjust and, 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 and go and attack your weaknesses. So uh, it, it's important for the 49ers. Just really it's, it's about having a clean game. You have a list of things, it's, and you haven't talked about it, and I haven't heard it much this week. Carlson, the new kicker, has got the lowest rate of touchbacks in the NFL last year. So if, if if they have a repeat of last week and these having these short kicks and allowing Kansas City to return the football, the Niners are playing having a lot of guys playing on special teams that again it's deep in the depth chart. When you have the injuries and, and things of that nature, uh, and that makes you vulnerable. That's why they've had just I mean, a lot of bad plays happen in special teams. It's in Minnesota they run the little uh, loop on the pump block. That's that's first day stuff to be able to recognize those things you know last week the re- the return kick the i mean there's just so many you got to have a clean game cuz Kansas City's going to score and they're going to and they're going to play good defense they're going to force you into some make you do some bad things but you can't hand him you talked about handing getting an extra bes- possession you can't have a, a a punt bounce off a guy's leg and give it to them and score in one play like they did uh in the Super Bowl you can't expose yourself. You have to have a clean game. And, and if, if they do, I think they've got a great shot. I'm not, I'm not worried about this game at all. Obviously, we don't play. I'm just excited to see some things. But you got – the thing I really like to see more with the 49ers defense is free up Nick Bosa. I know they have him playing a certain way, but there's been plays this year, specifically last week, where he smelled out things from great – film study and applied it on game day uh, if it's a deflected screen or uh, seeing a, a play help him ha- happen before his eyes and go and make that play because last year's fourth and one and there the Chiefs call a timeout and I write on the dry erase board quarter, quarterback keeper and you know Bosa's stunning and he's doing what he's supposed to do slicing in backer's supposed to loop over, loop over the top well he didn't Kansas City converts and they won the Super Bowl. And I think Bosa is capable of making more plays than he is, but they need to free him up a little bit, like the Steelers do with, with Watt. He, he pay that guy a lot of money, and I think he has a lot of ability, but I think sometimes they just cornerstone him in his role, and I think he can do more things. 
if you could add a piece to the puzzle before the trade deadline, would it be a defensive end? I don't know, but I definitely wouldn't be Redick, uh, who's with the you know holding out right now. I don't think. Tell, he's tell me why. Why is Redick is? I, you don't I, think he's a fit locker room? I don't think. I think Philadelphia had a, a parade and a party when he left. Interesting. And just leave yeah. it at that. Yeah. Um, you know, to me, one of the things that I'm concerned about is just who's going to be, who's going to do better in the red zone. I, I if, of all the stats out there, the one that I almost don't believe is the Chiefs 30th ranking in the red zone touch as far as touchdown percentage in the red zone. I view Andy Reid as the best red zone uh, play caller, maybe I've seen since Walsh. I mean, he's just fantastic. All the yeah. you know the pre-snap motion and everything's moving toward. You think it's a run right, and then here comes the you know the receiver left. You think everything's going left, and here everything's going right. I mean, he really makes defenses defend the full width of the field down on, down in the goal line. He still might have plays that he didn't use in the last Super Bowl, Larry. That's the Seriously. kind of stuff the coach. And I, you know what I love about Coach Reed. And I, I'd like to see it out of Coach Shanahan more. He's a play repeater, and I'm not talking about run plays. He, if a play's working for him, you know, I tell you that the, the corn dog play they ran in the Super Bowl. They ran that all during the playoffs at the end of the year, putting the ball in Mahomes' hand and giving him option to run. Hit Kelsey, hit a guy in the flat. They and he is not afraid to repeat repeat plays. And another thing that I love what he Coach Reed does is that he's going to give. San Francisco credit about trying to stop some of his best plays. He'll put layers on top of those plays. So the Niners this week, well, we're going to we're going to stop that fly sweep or that quarterback keeper. Well, when they're doing that, he's going to give them and let them have that cheese and then run a play the other way. That's the kind of things that'll be uh, really exciting about uh, uh, that game t- uh, tomorrow. Can't come fast enough. Um, can the Niners defend verticals? Can the Niners defend deep speed? Je- Justin Jefferson burned him for 97 yards. Atwell went right on by Mooney Ward for a 50-yard grab. They don't necessarily have a lot of fast 40 times in their secondary. Xavier Worthy has the rec- combine record, 4-2-1, and he, was, he may have been drafted with the Niners in mind. Can the Nin- yeah. I expect yeah. Worthy – I expect Mahomes to go up top to Worthy at least twice. Well – you know, when I when we do broadcast our games on YouTube, there's a coverage you'd ever want to see or if you're a def- the defensive team is, and it's Linda Ronstadt blew by you. And so many times <laughs> this year that great. that has happened. But there's also been times, and I know you've seen this, Larry, you're, you study the game, where they're in coverage, and then they panic when the ball's in the air. There's not that ball, that skill, you can't measure it, of the ball's in the air, and you go and make a play on the ball. You don't panic and pull a jersey, uh, face guard, whatever it may be, to get the P.I. or the hold. So they've been in coverage and been there. They need to make, they need to make those plays. And that's what, that's what it comes down to. And, and um, you know, Kelsey, when he's doing his slow trot in motion, there's a purpose of that. He's going to study where guys are. He's going to run his counters off things. Um, get hit them in the mouth. It's going to be, a, I think it's going to be a very close game tomorrow. One of the last things I want to ask you about here, and we appreciate your time, Chris Babcock with us on a, on a Saturday in football season. Chris will be doing stats tomorrow for Greg and Tim. And of course you can catch all day tomorrow, Niners and Chiefs action pre game. And of course, post uh, we'll have it all for you throughout the day on, on KMBR um, and don't miss any of it. But Brock Purdy, Going into the Thursday game against Seattle, Purdy was ranked 32nd out of 36 quarterbacks in play-action drop-back percentage. He's only been uh, in play-action 17.6% of the snaps this year. And um, and if you look at his numbers against play-action, you know, they're great. I mean, in this season, he's 78.6% completion percentage, 12.4 yards per attempt, 130.2 quarterback rating. He was the number one play action quarterback in 2023. Um, he's the number one play action quarterback here in 2024. And against Seattle, he had a play action, a play action passer rating of 135.4. And I'm looking at some of the numbers. I asked Shannon about it earlier this week. This year, the Niners are using play action 19.3% of Purdy's dropbacks. Last season, it was 23%. 
And I asked Shanahan, why is it, you know, considering Purdy's so damn good at play action, why is your use of play action down nearly 5% from a year ago? And Kyle said, you know, it's just, it's, there's a lot of things that we do that we don't, you know, we like to mix it up. But should they be utilizing the play action more to try to take full advantage of Brock's skills? Um, what do you What do you think? I mean, well, play action pass they, and Purdy is are they doing it enough? Well, you know, Coach Shanahan does a great job, but sure, the thing that that they ran with Brock since he's taken over and was a staple of this offense, but didn't have the foot fleet footed quarterbacks that he is, is running those nakeds off the stretch. The they boot. don't. They're not running that. They don't run that as much. And then Kyle will layer it with five or six different options. If it's going to the H, if it's going to the F, if it's going to the X cross, and is the tight end going to hold and go to the flat? All of those variances, I haven't seen those this year. And and when they've needed to get a play, and I'm like, God, we'd like to see a naked, and then all of a sudden, boom, they'll hit it for 12 or 15 yards. Then you get him out in space. He's got uh, layers, layer options to go to. So that's one. I probably that's a high percentage of the plays, Larry. If you recall, that they've play action passes that they run, and I'd also like to get back running some screens to the running backs. You know, just trying to get them involved in touching the football, but yet not having to break through the defensive line, kind of managing their their workload a bit and opening up the offense a little bit. But you also they're throwing the ball deep better. He's got, as you mentioned. A bunch of you know his average air uh, you know distance of, of uh, ranked in the league, so it, it's a give and take. But I'd love to see some more naked and bootleg action with Brock, and then it gives him the option to to get guys out in space for him just to tuck it and run it for first down. It's a great option play. You know, I mentioned that the Niners have missed forty two tackles, and I, I said that was the last one, but I one last one. Do you see any common denominators in? The 49ers, 42 missed tackles. And, you know, you, you've you been covering football for a long time on a lot of different levels. Missed tackles, to me, tell me that a defense may be getting fatigued. Uh, there may be, you know, guys who are, who are playing hurt. What do you see with the 49ers with the 42 missed tackles? It's a high number in three weeks. Uh, it's the level of, of talent that's having to play and how deep you are in, in the depth chart. And a lot of – and also, too, with tackling – I know there's a certain way to form tackle, get your head to the side. It's also can do. You go, you got to run to the football, and you've got to can do. You've got to grab cloth, and you've got to bring down that player. Break down in space. It's also a problem they have on their kickoff team. Guys aren't breaking down in space and getting their legs underneath them, bending their knees, and going and making a play. So those those little those simple fundamentals still fall true in, in, in the NFL. And when you're having to play guys that aren't used to playing at these many reps. So like you said, how their defense has digressed. Well, you've got guys that are, that are playing in like career games that have never been and had these many reps in a game. You're going to get exposed. Yeah. And it, it's, we're, we're seeing that. I think that's definitely what we're seeing. And we're going to, we're going to have to see the 49ers on their a game tomorrow. And they're going to need their a game to beat this Kansas city team for sure. Chris, awesome stuff, man. Have a great rest of your Saturday. Thanks for jumping on KMBR. Um, always love seeing you at the, uh, at the stadium. You do a fantastic job, man. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks Larry. I'm after I'm done with you, I'm jumping here to do some spotting for Larry bill for, uh, San Jose State, Wyoming. We got a Monta Vista alum, Connor Shade, that's coming home to play against the Spartoonies. So looking forward to it. And thanks, Larry. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for Sounds having me. Sounds good. Chris Babcock, fantastic. Fantastic.